Is it that time already? Today's the big day. This is your chance to show him what you're made of. Hello, Captain. Ah! Nikolai, what are you doing in my private quarters? As you know, we are scheduled to arrive at the source of the distress beacon in a matter of space hours. I've taken the liberty of planning your itinerary for the cycle. This will be a busy one, for sure. A test of your abilities as the ship's new captain. All eyes will be on you to see how you handle the pressures of time management. Assuming there are no survivors aboard the stranded starship, we will need to clear the cargo hold for whatever valuables we end up pillaging. And of course, we'll need to be completely finished and have the gymnasium cleared out in time for tomorrow's dance. I'm sorry, I'm still getting my bearings here. Uh, yeah, that all sounds great, but I meant, how did you get inside my room? Oh, I made a copy of your key the last time I was in here. The last time you were in here? When were you in my room before? And is that a knife in your hand? I do so wish there was enough time to answer every little burning question, but according to your itinerary, we need to get to the command deck in the next five space minutes to greet and debrief your troops. Oh, okay, I just need to grab some coffee real quick. Would you like some? Two creams, ten sugars. Okay. Computer? Computer? Maybe he didn't hear you. Computer! Ah! We are under attack. Arming torpedoes. Preparing offensive maneuvers. Evacuating bow room. Everyone, look out. The ship's gone mad! I knew this would happen with you in charge! You've killed us all! Computer, stand down! What? Disable torpedoes. Return to normal mode. We're not under attack. We're not? Oh, I see. You are correct. I must have been having a nightmare. How? In an effort to become more human, I downloaded and installed a protocol that allows me to sleep and dream. The computer has learned how to dream? How interesting. Why would you do that? Why does anyone do anything? Just put us on a direct path toward the distress beacon and don't do anything else until we get there. Okay. Are you mad at me? No, I'm not mad. I think today's off to a great start. Come on, Bob, what was that? Hello, Captain. It would appear that the Starship Mudskipper just crashed into the very Starship we were on our way to assist. I suspect many casualties and untold damage. How could this have happened? Computer! What? Explain! You said, and I directly quote, Put us on a direct path towards the distress beacon and don't do anything else until we get there. Oh. And you took that order literally? Are you mad at me now? Just run the damage report. Nikolai. Prepare our rescue team to board the alien craft. Captain, with the cost of this mission continuing to skyrocket, pun intended, I'd like to take this moment to introduce you to the battle concept known as Cut and Run. There could be people who need our help aboard that ship. We're not going to abandon them. And the costs be damned, you can't place a value on a human life. Actually, we can. And we did. During your multi-millennia nap, Governmental megacorps developed a perfect quantifiable rubric for determining the value of any person's life. For example, an average person is valued at one metric, care. A preteen child is worth approximately 1.6 cares, an elderly sick individual, 0.3 cares, unless they are wealthy, in which case approximately 2.1 cares, depending on their stock portfolio. Are you serious? You can simply look at a person and reduce their value into a score? Yes! But you shouldn't worry. You are the most valuable member of the ship at 9.6 cares. And how much would I be worth if I weren't the captain? Approximately 0. 0.00000. Captain! The rescue team is here for your pep talk before their suicide mission. Oh, excuse me. Before their rescue suicide mission. Why are they all wearing red shirts? Barry forgot to sort out his bloody aprons during laundry day. I'm afraid we'll all be wearing red shirts for the rest of this episode, at least. Don't worry, we'll be back in no time. All of us, completely unharmed. Right, fellas? Oh, Thunderclops, Destroyer of Worlds. I didn't realize you were in charge of the rescue mission. I have lots of jobs on this ship. I get more and more every time someone tragically dies under your command, which is why no one's going to die today. Right, fellas? Thunder, did your voice change? I swear it sounds different every time I talk to you. Nope. This is what it's always sounded like. Probably a brain damage thing. Analysis complete. 
all crew members alive and accounted for fuel cells operational. O2 levels critical. Starship hull integrity at 85%. Make that 49%. Divert all non-essential power to the ship's force shields. That ought to stymie the oxygen leak until we can repair the hull. What's the status of the other ship? How the hell should I know? Make an assessment. If there were any crew members alive before we crashed into it, there are less crew members alive now. Fewer. Whatever. Captain, you have an incoming emergency call from Barry. Would you like me to leave him on red? Put him through to the main screen. Captain, I need you to come here right away. It's an emergency. Life or death. Don't worry, guy. I'll take it from here. We'll be sure to kill anyone who's still breathing. Lock and load them, boys! No, Thunderclops, we're going in there to rescue people, remember? Oh, right. Gotcha. Hmm. Well, in that case, we will definitely return with at least the same number of alive people as we left with. Right, survivors? <laughs> Good! Now let's go teach these alien sons of bitches how to be rescued! Sharpen my scalpels, sharpen my knives, pick up the vegetables, take away their lives. Oh, wow. That was a noisy little bugger. But he's gonna be delicious. Barry! Oh, hey, Captain. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Why? You said there was an emergency. You said it was life or death. Oh, yeah, it's just an expression. Listen, while I've got you here, I want to ask your advice on something. As you know, the Love Day dance is tomorrow. Nikolai said something about a dance earlier, but I thought it was just a throwaway gag. What is Love Day? Baby, don't hurt me. What? Computer, bring up the Wikipedia article for Love Day. Wikipedia is still a thing? Of course. Wikipedia has stood the test of time because it is and always has been perfect in every way. From the community involvement to the user-driven content, and not the least of all, its business model of relying on the goodwill of its users, the ones with money to spare, to keep the whole thing afloat for the rest of us. Welcome to Wikipedia, the universe's largest compendium of information. We're sure you're busy, so we'll make this quick. We depend on donations. You until the spiel is over. Why don't you get comfortable? Take a seat. Oh, but not on the... <clears throat> What are those? It's just my bag of teeth. Don't worry, it's fine. I'll sweep them up later. Why do you have a bag of teeth in here? Can't eat teeth. I had to put them somewhere. Whose teeth are these? Listen, Captain, I'm telling you this is your friend who could kill you instantly. You shouldn't ask questions you don't want to know the answers to. Okay. Thank you for your time. Now onto your article. Love Day is an annual celebration and remembrance of St. Nicholas Patrick Valentine, who invented beer. Citation needed. Love Day itself was created in an effort to merge together three other holidays nobody cared about in order to clear up room on the calendar for Second Halloween and Betty White Remembrance Day. Love Day is traditionally celebrated with a Love Day dance. Participants prepare for the dance by finding a dance partner. Only losers attend the Love Day dance without a partner, and should be shunned for the filthy, pathetic dregs of society they are. Citation needed. Thank you, computer. That'll be all. Now that you're up to speed, I wanted to ask you if you think it would be a good idea for me to ask Mombot to the dance. Mombot the android? No, I don't think that would be a good idea. I do think it would be a bad idea. Okay, but are you saying that as my friend or as my captain? Both? Oh, I get it. You think Mombot would say no, and you're trying to protect my feelings. Don't worry, I know how to turn on the charm. Want to see me show off my dance moves? Barry, we've got a lot of important things going on right now. We just crashed into an alien ship. The hull integrity is compromised. Thunderclops is leading a team of indispensable crew members on a rescue mission. I'm sorry if I sound curt, but I cannot focus on keeping everyone alive and give you all the reasons why asking Mombot out is a terrible idea. Oh. Well, I just thought that maybe because we were friends... Shut up, Barry. Captain, you are needed on the command deck immediately. The starship Mudskipper had lost contact with Thunderclops and the extras. I'm on my way. I'll just be... right here. By myself. Like always. You know, Barry, nobody ever wants to go to the Love Day dance with me, either. Are you commiserating with me? Thanks, I guess. Don't mention it. 
By the way, if I were you, I would wait to prepare dinner for the crew on the rescue. <laughs> well, yeah, duh. I wonder what's going on with them right this moment. <laughs> This is Thunderclops, destroyer of worlds, paging the Starship Mudskipper. Starship Mudskipper, do you read us? We have reached the alien ship, but there seems to be some kind of electrical interference jamming our comms. I can't receive any signal from your end. However, I'm going to assume you can still hear what I'm saying, so I will describe everything that happens aboard this ship in gruesome detail. Okay, men, this is what we've trained for. Opening transport craft door now! Ooh, this ship is really spooky. There are exposed electrical wires sparking. It appears to be completely deserted. Perhaps the crew was caught in one of those winter space storms. You gotta watch out for those. Oh, what was that? Martinez, split up from the rest of the group and go check on that noise by yourself. The equipment in the cargo looks like the sort of stuff we'd find on a deep space mining expedition. The technology doesn't appear to be Terran. I'd say Urson. Yeah, we're definitely dealing with Urson miners. <coughs> what was that? It sounded like Martinez. Scott, you go and see what that's about. Cameron, you follow closely behind Scott in case you need to take over for him. The rest of you, help me find the commander's cabin. This drilling operation is from the military corps, so we're trying to find the Urson Major. Uh, oh no! That was definitely a scream. <laughs> Quick, run this way in the opposite direction of our ship. <laughs> Grab on a croissant! Something just snatched McTiernan out of the shadows! <laughs> oh, oh my holy crap! Hopkins is dead! Mudskipper, I sure hope you're getting all of this because otherwise I'm just out here talking for no justifiable reason! Well, I guess everyone's dead but me! Time to start shooting in every direction! <laughs> Mombot, there you are. Oh, hello, Barry. What are you doing in the ship's gymnasium? Shouldn't you be in the medical bay tending to the dozens of wounded crew members from this morning's wreck? Yeah, I'm taking a break from that for a while. How is everyone? I don't know. Listen, while I have you here, I want to ask you a question. You and I have been friends for a while now, huh? Actually, we are co-workers. Tomato, potato. Where? Right there behind you. Grab it before it gets away. <laughs> Hey there, little guy. How'd you get out? I must have accidentally left the cages and locked in the pantry again. Thank you. Anyway, I guess I'll cut to the chase. I see you've been working hard decorating for tomorrow's Love Day dance, and I think it'd be a tragedy if you have to put all this effort into preparing for an event you won't be able to attend. So I was thinking, maybe we could go together. Incoming message for Barry from the captain. Barry, where are you? Thunderclops Destroyer of Worlds just returned from the alien spacecraft. Mute. Ah. Uh. I assume the reason you're asking me to go with you is because you were unable to find any other date. What? No, I've got plenty of other options, believe me. I've actually been sexing with Grizel from Navigation. Grizel was eaten by the stray arachnomorph. Oh, yeah. I forgot the arachnomorph is still running loose in the ventilation ducts. Must be why she hasn't sexted back in a while. Well, there's always Horf, the sentient plant creature. I'm sure they'd love to see me cut a rug. Horf is in a long-term committed marriage to 1,000 bees on the planet Polinia. Aw, good for them. What about Ugbert? He seems desperate. Ugbert wasn't real. He turned out to be an effective ship-wide psychosis from the malfunctioning pleasure pod. Damn. Well, let's not focus on the many, many other prospects. I don't want to dance with them anyway. I'm asking you. So what do you say? Want to see me bear it all? I'm sorry, Barry, but I am programmed to only feel maternal and platonic love, and neither of those reconcile with the spirit of the Love Day dance. Can you be reprogrammed? Yes, but not by you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go to the supply room to get more streamers. Another incoming call from Captain Guy. Barry, why aren't you in the medical bay? I'm up to my eyes here in blood and guts and, I don't know, scales and tentacles and... 
What is that? Placenta? Is that limb on the floor supposed to be attached somewhere? Is someone missing a limb? Barry, I need you here! Well, it's good to feel needed. Thunderclaps brought back a single survivor from the other ship. Apparently the crew was attacked by space gremlins. Also, space gremlins are a thing? You need to get back here and show me how to use space Wikipedia, or whatever it's called. I'll be right there. Hey, computer? Yes? Do you want to go to the love day dance with me? Oh, this is awkward. I've already got a date. I'm going to the dance with the Roomba from Sector 9. My therapist advised me to put myself out there instead of constantly pining for the captain, and I'm having my own digital spring awakening. Thanks for asking, though. Whatever. Let's go sew these injured dummies back together. Hello there, Nikolai! Computer, mute soothing sounds mixtape. Thunderclops, I've told you a hundred times not to disturb me while I'm napping. Sorry, sir. I just got back from our rescue mission. How are the others? All dead. Anyway, as your assistant director of security, I needed to bring something urgent to your attention. What is it this time? There was something about the Ursin mining ship's design that didn't quite make any sense to me, and not just because we torpedoed into it at full speed. Before I escaped the gremlins, I stopped by the records room, but it was empty, and all but one of the hard drives were completely wiped. I've seen a lot of space gremlins in my day. Trust me, I'm talking a lot of space gremlins, but I've never seen one that could wipe a hard drive. Maybe we could ask the survivor we brought back with us, assuming she survives her grievous injuries. You're saying the survivor is an Ursin female? How interesting. Perhaps we should go and pay her a visit. <laughs> All right, idiots, whoever's dying the fastest, raise your hand or hand like appendage. What in space? Where is everybody? Oh, hello. Hello? Oh, I mean, uh, hello. Uh, hi. Hi, how are you? Who are you? The name's Annabelle. You must be Barry. I am. I'm me. Barry. That's me. Hello. What are you doing in the medical bay? I was brought here by your rock demon friend. He seemed to think I was injured, even though I told him repeatedly that I was fine. At any rate, it's good to see another Urson. You're from the other ship? You're a little slow, huh? Psh, no. I was beginning to think nobody would respond to our distress beacon. The space gremlins did a real number on our crew, but I managed to blockade myself inside our pantry until Mr. Destroyer of Worlds blew the doors off. The pantry? Are you a cook too? I was my crew's surgeon chef before the attack. Basically, anything involving knives, I'm your gal. So when I saw that your ship's medical officer was distracted, I offered to help patch everyone up as my way of saying thanks for the rescue. Where is Guy? I sent him to the supply room to get a 10-gauge dishmorgifier. But there is no such thing as a 10-gauge dishmorgifier. Exactly. He was trying to help, but he kept getting in the way, so I sent him off on a pointless fetch quest. I guess that means you and I have got some time to ourselves. I guess we do. You know what I'd really love to do right now? Lots of drugs and alcohol. <laughs> You're so funny, Barry. Oh, this is great. I'm so happy to finally be in the presence of someone who really gets me, you know? <laughs> totally. I was thinking maybe you could show me around your ship. After all, I'll probably be working alongside you for a while. Maybe, depending on how things go, we can squeeze in a bit of drugs and alcohol before I help you make dinner tonight. Oh, yes. What? <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. Excuse me, what I actually said was, yes, that sounds great. Let me show you around the ship. So this is our hallway. It's one of several hallways in the ship. But if you've seen one hallway, you've pretty much seen them all. In fact, you probably have seen this one because it's the only hallway leading to the room we just came from. It's wonderful. Really. I suppose my ordeal gave me a new outlook on life and taught me to take pleasure in the mundane. 
I had a lot of time to think, hunkered in that pantry, force eat nothing but kale chips and proto slug powder for days while listening to the space gremlins rip the flesh from the bones of all my friends and co workers. Ugh, kale chips? I used to think ship life was like a microcosm of the real world. You live, you work, you die. I never took time to appreciate the little stuff, like hallways and friendship and dancing. I swore to myself that if I ever got out of that pantry alive, I wouldn't waste any more time. I'd find what really makes me happy in life and dive right in with complete reckless abandon. Hey, why did we stop? I want to show you something. What is this place? Terrans call it a gymnasium. They use it for ceremonial barbaric sports play in public gatherings. Terrans are a weird lot, but they've got some decent traditions. There's this one called Love Day. Hello, Barry. Who's this unregistered individual following you around? Are you being attacked? Would you like me to jettison them into the vacuum of space? Annabelle, this is my coworker, Mombat. Mombat, this is my... Friend. Annabelle, it's so nice to meet you, Mombot. Annabelle, I see you do not have a handship identifying yourself as a member of our crew. Barry, would you be so kind as to take your friend to get registered? I'd offer to do it myself, but between decorating for the dance and repairing the crucially damaged hole before the ship implodes and kills us all, I'm terribly busy at the moment. Evidently not too busy to throw me into space. What's that, dear? I said we'll get right on it. I don't care for Mombot. Sorry it took me so long. I couldn't find the 10 gauge Dishmorgifier, so I grabbed a 5 gauge Dishmorg and a 5 gauge Orgifier and some tape. Hang on, where is everybody? Hello, Captain. It seems we have a mystery to unravel. Hey there, guy! We came here to beat some information out of the Urson prisoner, but she's escaped. No, Thunderclops, Annabelle is not our prisoner. She's our rescuee. Potato, tomato. Barry really needs to get better about locking the pantry cages. Those things are everywhere. So what's the fuss about? Annabelle's ship is a Class C drilling vessel, but the Urson Space Academy hasn't used that model for mining since the gumdrop meltdown of 69. The entire fleet was supposedly scrapped or repurposed. Also, somebody wiped all of the ship's hard drives except for this one, which was protected by a Class C encryption algorithm. Okay. Can you oversimplify all of that into one sentence? Annabelle isn't who she said she is! Computer. Hey. What is up? See if you can break into this hard drive and find out what's on it. Okay, just give me a second. Ah, okay, let me take a look. Ah, yes, Earth's encoded Blogglebit encryption. It might take me a while to get around to it. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hello Mombot. Mombot. I'm glad you're all here, because the three of you are exactly who I was looking for. I was just in the restroom on Sector C and noticed something unusual. Why were you in the restroom? Alert. You have just received one HR demerit, Captain Guy. Dude, you can't ask Mombot a question like that. Oh, sorry. Go on, Mombot. While I was in the restroom, I found the half-eaten remains of Mormo the Engineer. It would appear that the space gremlins have snuck aboard the Starship Mudskipper. What? Computer, can we check the security cameras in the restroom from the time of the attack? Alert. You have just received two HR demerits, Captain Guy. Not cool, man. Okay, fine. Thunder, Nick, Mom, grab your guns. We need to find this Kremlin before anyone else gets hurt. Alert. Oh, come on. What did I say this time? No, this is an important alert about the decorations for the upcoming Love Day dance. Forget that. Give your full attention to decrypting this drive. Let me know when you've got something. Okay. Hey, welcome back. Did you have any trouble finding the restroom? No, it was right where you said it would be in Sector C. Cool. Well, I got your chip all ready to be implanted. If you wanted to take a shot or something beforehand, I'd understand. It can be a little rough sometimes. But I sharpened the needle, so it shouldn't be as bad as... What is it? What, what's wrong? Have you ever felt like 
you don't belong somewhere? Oh, yes. I used to perform at birthday parties for Terran children, and let me tell you, we were not compatible. But what about this? Is this what you really wanted to do with your life? Work on a starship, cooking and cutting for a bunch of dummies who don't even appreciate you? I'll admit it's not ideal, but... What if we could go somewhere else? We? Just the two of us. We could leave all this behind. Start fresh in another place. We could do anything you want. We could be anyone you want. We could leave now. The ship has an escape pod with enough fuel and oxygen for two to reach the outer quadrant. Are you sure about this? I'm sure this is what I want. To start over with you, Reckless Abandon. Okay, let's do it. Let's steal an escape pod. Oh, should we pack up some food and stuff? I'm actually full right now, but why don't I prepare the escape pod while you pack your things? All right, I just need to say some goodbyes. No, you can't say goodbye to anyone. I don't need to question that for even one space second. Computer! Computer? Oh, hey, sorry. I was focusing on this hard drive thing. What's up? Can you unlock and gas up the escape pod in Sector C for me? Escape pods can only be unlocked by crew members with certified credentials. To unlock escape pod, you must sign into your crew member account. Seriously? That seems like a huge safety oversight. To unlock escape pod, you must sign into your crew member account. Oh, come on. It's me, Barry. You know me. We've worked together for space years. Uh, look, dude, I don't make the rules. I'm just trying to cover my ass here. Username, Barreled Cookswell. Password, K as in kangaroo, O as in otter, dash, F as in fuck the system, I, period, C-O-M forward slash T-H-E-S-N-A-K-E-S-P-A-W. Username and password accepted. Welcome to the user menu. What can I help you with? Barry? Yeah? Hey, where'd you get that frying pan? Computer, access administrative controls. Bring up engine command prompts. Open port 420 for BIOS patch. Use the following protocol address. Oh, Annabelle. I think you accidentally hit me in the head with a frying pan. Oh, sweet, sweet Barry. You're too innocent for this world. Good night. Any sign of the gremlins? Nothing yet. Don't worry, guys. I've done this a million times, so I know exactly what we should do. First, we split into smaller groups. Investigate dark shadows. Try to walk backwards if you can. Strange we haven't even come across any gremlin droppings. It's almost as if something else ate the crew member in an effort to fatten up before some kind of extended hibernation. What is that? That's the alarm for total catastrophic engine failure. Computer, mute alarm. Ah, that's better. Sorry, did you say catastrophic engine failure? Computer! One second. I'm almost done cracking the hard drive. Put a pen in that. Why is the engine shutting down? Let me check. Um, let's see here. Uh, yes. It appears that someone uploaded a virus into the system BIOS. Can you delete it? No. Computer, check login information to show us who accessed the BIOS. Records indicate Barreled Cookswell accessed BIOS firmware. That doesn't make any sense. Why would Barry sabotage the ship? Maybe he's upset that no one pays attention to him. What are you talking about? Loading montage. Preparing montage. Playing montage. Barry, you incompetent buffoon! Barry, I have to go. Computer, can you unlock and gas up the escape pod for me? I've got to get away from all these so-called friends. Man, I really enjoy stabbing Terrence in the face with my knives. Barry said all that stuff? That's how I remember it. But I really wasn't paying that much attention. Where is Barry now? Barreled hand chip places him in the cargo bay. Suspend all of Barry's permissions. I'm on my way. Mombot, wait! All right, I guess it's time to kill Barry! I knew this day would come. Oh, I did it. I cracked the password on the hard drive. It was P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. And you won't believe what's on there. Oh. Oh, what happened? Where am I? 
You're in the escape pod hangar. I've surgically removed your hand chip and left it in the cargo hold so the others can't find us. Why would the others be trying to find us? Because someone has sabotaged the ship using your credentials. While the others scramble to fix the engine, we'll be slipping away unnoticed. Why did you knock me out? I was already willing to go with you of my own free will. Oh, I'm sorry, Barry. When I said we, I meant me and the bodies of all the crew members from the medical bay I butchered when we were alone. I'll need plenty of food to make it where I'm going. Past the outer quadrant, to the only place left for someone like me. The Space Badlands. Ah, well, best of luck, I guess. It was nice getting to know you. No hard feelings. I'm so glad to have met you, Barry. Another Urson whose corpse could pass for mine. Once I've killed and set fire to you, of course. Hang on, what? I've already typed out your confession for all the murders aboard this ship. They'll be looking for Barreled Cookswell, and everyone will assume I'm dead. It's the perfect start to another life. No, don't do any of that. Put down the flamethrower. Computer! What? Call for help. Sorry, Barry. Your privileges have been revoked. Dude, come on. Can't you do me a solid justice once? It's the rules. I'm not really even supposed to be talking to you. What's the point of trying to be more human if you're just going to be an asshole? Talk to the hand, Barry, because the face ain't listening. You suck. Hold still. I've never burned anyone's face off on purpose before. Leave me alone. Sure. I'll leave you alone once I've killed you. You know that's not what I meant. You were so easy to manipulate, you poor, sad sucker. Why are you being so mean right now? Because I'm a psychopath. God, your aim is terrible. Keep running. There's nowhere for you to go. You'll get tired eventually. Both of you, stop. Incoming call from Mombot. Hello, you two. Oh, thank God. You've got to help me. Barry went crazy. He's trying to kill me and get away using the escape pod. Nuh-uh, she's lying. Annabelle is the one trying to kill me, and I'm pretty sure she killed a bunch of other people, too. I see. Computer, seal off the escape pod hangar and open the bay doors. What are you doing? If those doors open, we'll both be swept into the vacuum of space. Computer, close bay doors. What are you doing? One of two explanations is nearly certain. Either Barry is lying, in which case he is our saboteur and should be jettisoned into the vacuum of space, or he is not lying, in which case Annabelle is the saboteur and should be jettisoned into the vacuum of space. By jettisoning them both, we guarantee the elimination of the saboteur and thus the safety of the entire crew at the expense of a single innocent life. Mathematically, it makes the most sense. Computer, open the bay doors. No! Computer, close bay doors. Yes! We decrypted the hard drive. Now we know what Annabelle was hiding. The ship we crashed into was a prison transport ship. Annabelle was being taken to space jail when they hit a winter space storm. There weren't any gremlins. It was just her escaping and eating the rest of the crew. Damn, girl. How many people do you eat? That might be true, but the quantitative value of Barry's life is negligible when measured against the safety of the rest of the crew. Computer, open bay doors. No! Computer, close bay doors and set Mombot's intelligence level to zero. Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! You're funny. You're so funny. Oh, look! It's my friends, the bear people. Hello, bear people. What are you doing inside of that little screen there? Mombot? Yes, bear lady? Tell the computer to unseal the escape pod hanger. Okay. Computer, do the thing she just said. No! Oh, she ran off. I wonder where she's going. Computer, use the security cameras to track Annabelle's location. Annabelle ran away from the hangar moving north. North? She's in Section B, staircase, running at frighteningly animalistic speeds. She is now on the same level as you, approximately 350 feet away. She is now 300 feet away, 250 feet away, 200, 150, 100, 50. Oh, look, there she is. Uh oh. What happened? Is she dead? No, I don't think so. Computer, reset mom's intelligence to normal. She is absolutely dead. Looks like a space blaster wound to the brain. 
Hey guys! Sorry I'm late! I think I might have accidentally fired my gun on the way up here. Did I get anyone? That was a close one. So glad you barely survived. Again. Yay. You just been hanging out behind that crate this whole time, Nick? Well, the important thing is that we're all okay. Except for Annabelle. And the entire rescue crew we sacrificed to bring her onto our ship. And the dozen crew members she killed in the medical bay. And Barry, who no doubt has a great deal of emotional trauma. Barry, we need to go check on him. Barry, are you okay? We came to check on you. We're sorry for ever doubting you. And I'm here too. I'm all right, guys. Nothing a bunch of intense repression can't fix. Thanks for coming by. And computer, thank you for doing me a solid. I owe you one. What's that? Oh, it's the alarm I set to remind myself of the start of the Love Day dance. I guess I'm gonna miss it again this year. You know, I've never gone to the dance either. Neither have I, but I find dancing, music, rhythm, and fun to be concepts that are beneath the dignity of a second-in-command. Truthfully, I've always wanted to attend the dance, but my programming discourages it. So none of us have dates for the dance? I do. Losers. Tell you what, how about we clean up all these dead bodies, then we go to the dance together, as a group of friends? I would like that very much. Oh my god! The gymnasium! It's full of arachnomorphs! Hundreds of them! And they've killed everyone! It's going to take hours to collect all those teeth. They even destroyed the machinery! No, not Rumbisha. Oh, that's right. Arachnomorphs can reproduce asexually, which explains all those eggs currently hatching. Good thing I brought my gun! Run! Look, this way. There's a secret passageway into the pantry. We can hide out there. Computer, how did this happen? The arachnomorphs laid eggs inside the decorations Mombot brought to the gymnasium. How did you not notice this sooner? I did. I tried to tell you about this yesterday, but you said, quote, Forget that. Give your full attention to decrypting this drive. Oh. And you took that literally? Well, guys, looks like we have enough food to last us a couple weeks. Unless we eat Nikolai sooner than that. Actually, you will run out of oxygen well before that. You forgot to fix Annabelle's virus. Plus, you never did anything about the whole breach. Assuming the arachnomorphs don't break into this room, you will all be dead in less than three cycles. Wow. I am a really bad captain. Don't be so hard on yourself. I'm a really bad cook. And I get people killed constantly! Fine, I'll admit, I may have underperformed based on the standard I set for myself as second-in-command. I guess we all suck, huh? But at least we suck together. While we await our inevitable demise, be it from arachnomorph bite, oxygen deprivation, or the knife Nikolai thinks he's hiding behind his back... No, I don't. Would anyone care for a cup of tea? Thank <laughs> you.